Okay, here's what the bedroom looked like before we began our DIY project on it. I know, it looks like we're squatters here. No bed stand, walls look pretty bland, and there's absolutely no sense of aesthetics. Now, here's what it looks like after doing some DIY work on it. We began the process by heading over to Sherwin-Williams to grab some black paint for the walls. We wanted an eggshell type of black and as soon as we found that, we brought it back home and started working on the largest wall in the room. The goal was to paint that entire wall black. First we applied some painters tape to the baseboard, wall edges and around the window. Next we applied the first coat of paint which of course never looks the best especially since the wall was white to start with. This took us about 20 to 30 minutes. We applied the second coat the following day after which the wall looked a whole lot better. We hit up Home Depot shortly after to pick up some stain ready wood slats. They're called hemlock and they're definitely not cheap but absolutely worth it. Since they're already pre-cut to one and a half inch width and have also been sanded, they expedite the whole process. The slats were longer than we needed them to be so we asked one of the nice machine operators to help in cutting the wood to size. Make sure you measure the height for each slat before cutting because walls are usually uneven and they probably won't all be the same exact height across the same wall. Soon after I was back home applying some matte walnut wood stain to each piece of the wood slat. Staining each piece of wood was long and painful and I've always hated this part of the process. I also did this part by myself which made it longer. I let them sit and dry overnight even though the wood stain I used was water based and fast drying. Early the next day I was back at it applying the second stain to give the wood slats a darker walnut look. The more coats of stain applied, the darker the walnut color will be. This again was a long process, but definitely worth it for the final result. After the second stain, I let them sit for three to four hours and then began applying the first coat of polyurethane. This was to seal the stain on the wood and give it that finishing touch. This step also helps give the wood slats a nice shine. This took us a similar amount of time as it took to complete each coat of stain. Since I was working with a water-based polyurethane, I let it dry for about two to three hours before we applied the second coat, which was faster since I had help from Hannah this time around. After the second poly coat had dried, the wood slats were ready to go up on the wall. We took off the painter's tape and then stuck each wood slat to the wall, starting from the far left. We only wanted to cover up the section with no window. We used some No More Nails glue as well as a couple of really thin nails to attach them. This had worked for us before with other slat wall projects so it worked well for this as well. Just don't use too much glue or nails or that could ruin the whole look. We dabbed small amounts of glue behind each piece and used two nails, one at the top and one at the bottom. You might have to cut one or more of the wood slats to accommodate an electrical outlet or a light switch, so make sure you have a miter saw for that or just get that cut at the Home Depot as well. For hours, we used a miter saw. It was already getting late by the time we started adding the wood slats, but we made sure to add them all before calling it for the day. The next day, it was easy to see the results and we couldn't be more satisfied. We also spray painted the electrical outlet cover black to match the wall. The room gets a lot of light, especially on that wall, and going dark helped absorb some of that light, which was great. Our job wasn't done yet, so we shifted our focus to the adjoining wall where the TV was. For this wall, we started by adding wood slats all the way from the light switch around the entry door to the end of the wall. Just like every other slat wall we've done, we started by taking out measurements to make sure each wood slat would fit and also to find out how many we needed. Once we had all the numbers down, we hit our local Home Depot again. The process was the same as it was last time, except this time we needed a lot less wood. We brought the wood back home for treatment as usual, but before that, we applied the first and second coat of the black eggshell paint. This one was so much quicker than the first wall. We painted as far as a little past the light switch because we had plans to add wallpaper to the wall space between the two slat walls. After the second coat dried, we used a leveler and a pencil to mark the starting point for the wallpaper. The same line is where we wanted the last piece of wood slat to cover up the intersection of the wallpaper and the black paint for a better finish. After that, we measured the amount of wall space we wanted to cover in wallpaper and then ordered a roll of Botany Tropical Steel Gray Wallpaper from PhotoWall. The wallpaper came as tiles and we got eight of them. They also provide you with all the tools you'll need to get the wallpaper on the wall, which was pretty great. We mixed up the sticky substance that was provided and began applying it to the wall using a roller. There's also a brush provided which I ended up switching to since it was pretty much easier to use in my opinion. The whole process of adding the wallpaper to the wall took longer than I'd expected and that was because we had to make sure each tile lined up perfectly with the next. It was our first time working with wallpaper too. The next day we could clearly see the final result and I thought it was wonderful. We did make the mistake of not painting black behind the connecting point for each tile. This affected how clean the final result looked but it wasn't that much of a big deal as far as I'm concerned. The last thing we had to do was add the remaining wood slats to the door area to finish up the wall. We applied the walnut stain to the wood slats twice as per usual and then did the same with the polyurethane. 
The one thing to note this time is that we use the plastic wrap on the floor instead of papers like we'd always done. Papers tend to stick to the wood after applying stain and poly, but plastic does not. I had help from Hannah throughout this part and that expedited the process, and we were done treating the wood in no time. We brought the finished wood slats to the rooms and quickly added them to the wall and around the door area. We did have a light switch to deal with, so we had to cut one slat to fit around it. Adding the wood slat to that area finished the look of the conjoining walls, and let me tell you, I was very impressed with the final result. At that point, our work on the walls was done and it was time to add some furniture and a TV. These all had to complement the aesthetic of the room as well, so we had to pick and choose wisely. The first furniture we picked up was a six drawer mom dresser from Ikea for extra storage. We picked it up in white so it could stand out from the wall. Just like a lot of Ikea furniture, the manual wasn't too helpful, but we got it built very quickly with two sets of hands working at the task. We had always had a king mattress but no bed frame to hold it up, so it was time to find something that fit. We initially ordered a platform bed from Wayfair, but it was too large for the room which was disappointing to say the least. We ended up ordering another one from Article, it's called the Bassy Walnut King Bed Frame. This was also smaller and had a lower profile. It had no headboard which we actually wanted since the window behind the bed is very low. Putting it together was quick and easy and honestly I think I like it better than I would have liked the platform bed for this space. It kind of disappears underneath the mattress which fits with the minimalist approach or aesthetic that we were going for. The TV was next and for this we opted for a 55 inch 2022 Samsung The Frame TV which doubles as a TV and a wall decor. Its biggest appeal to me is how flush it mounts onto the wall and the matte display it possesses, which pretty much eliminates glares and reflections from the screen. The last TV suffered from excessive reflections and glares, especially because there was lots of light coming in from both windows on the opposite side of the room. Mounting the frame TV wasn't at all conventional, but after reading and following the instructions to the T, we were able to get it mounted to the center of the wallpaper section on the wall, and this was just perfect. I did have second thoughts about getting a larger frame TV, but I got used to the 55 inch very quickly. There's a single super thin translucent cable going from the TV to the One Connect box, which houses all the TV ports like HDMI's and more. This further adds to the clean look of the TV, which was a big win for me. I'd planned on drilling a hole in the wall to pass cables behind if I'd stayed with the other TV, which would have been messier and more time consuming. The frame TV uses Samsung's QLED technology to provide super rich, bright and vibrant colors, which look amazing. The TV also gets very bright, which is great especially in bright rooms like ours. It's also a smart TV which can be controlled remotely using a voice assistant or the Samsung SmartThings app. One of my favorite features of the TV is the art mode. This mode is another reason I got this. You can have the TV display art from Samsung's gallery or upload your own and display it on the TV. I definitely prefer to upload mine since Samsung charges a monthly fee to use art from their gallery besides the very limited selection of complimentary art they provide for free. The process of uploading photos to the TV is quick and easy and can be done through the app or by connecting the drive to the One Connect box. Of course, you have to make sure the photos are 4K, that is 3840 by 2160 by editing them in like Photoshop or something, any other editing software like that. Through the SmartThings app, you can also edit how the photos display and add effects like Madden and more, but only to photos you have uploaded. I also set up motion sensor for art mode so that when no one is in the room, the TV turns off to save power. The image quality of the TV is very nice as well, but definitely not like the deep black levels and sharpness and image quality you'll get on an OLED TV. I wasn't expecting much from the TV speakers, but was surprised at how decent they sounded. I don't watch too much TV in bed, so I don't need a whole speaker system with subwoofers and all. This TV was the perfect fit for the wall and it didn't take away from the wood slat and wallpaper design. In fact, it complemented it and I couldn't be more satisfied with how everything turned out. I added some side tables to either side of the bed temporarily while waiting for the ones we really wanted. Before this project, we also had some automated blinds installed in this room just like the rest of the house. To finish up the TV wall look, I added a couple plants, you know, to kind of give it a little bit of greenery. There's still a few things to add to the room. Things like drapes for the windows, wall mounted picture frames and more, but the main part of the room is complete at least for now. After all that, we learned so much and I'm glad we got this done. This room also now aligns with the overall aesthetic we've been slowly incorporating into different rooms within the house. We're certainly not done, so make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Turn on notifications by clicking the gold bell icon too if you want to be notified when I post these videos. I hope you've enjoyed watching as we brought this project to life. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for your time. It's Tommy with Midas Tech and I'm out.